perspective. <clears throat> So some screenshots. So this is DDI. This is how main screen looks like. Uh, uh, it has a map uh, in, uh, in the, uh, on the bottom, on the, on the, uh, the top of screen. So the, every green box, it's a, it's a properly red uh, block of sectors. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, a sector. So each, each, uh, each uh, uh, digit here or block here uh, is associated with sector. So for example, this yellow block this, uh, this was the entire block that wasn't read properly. And so it marked every single sector within that block as, as uh, yellow. Or it could be red again if it, it was an error. Uh, there is always uh, hex data is going on the fly. Uh, you will not be able to read it, right? But it will give you idea that is, you are actually imaging something. Because if this is. Yeah, yeah. When it's. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You have no idea what it is, but yeah. data. Or it's zeros, and you know you're in an area. Where yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, yeah, and this is and this is happening. Yeah, yeah, and that's happening that you are actually imaging, spending your time, right? Like uh, taking again, putting some pressure on the drive, and recovering nothing, right? And you can press spacebar at any time. If you see zeros, you can just press spacebar and jump, jump, jump until you get some good data, some data, right? Because again, you can jump freely because it has all this map, you can get back to that place at any time. That's, that's the flexibility, right? Yeah, you, you can just skip, 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 and then see, oh, OK, it's some data. Or you can even take into account some counters, right? Again, file counters, how many executable files and pictures or NTFS or HFS uh, metadata are imaged. So, so during the imaging, you can watch hex data, and you can watch counters. If you see file counters incrementing, that's an that's a, that's a, uh, uh, indicator for you that you are imaging that type of data. Okay? So that's, this real-time data validation is, is very, very important. Okay? So that, again, and it gives you confidence, again. So you know what you're doing. You have, you have a complete feedback with, with the process, with the drive, so what's happening. <clears throat> And this is just an example of, uh, of different configuration parameters. Uh, we don't have time to get into this, but this is also I mentioned is basically this is a drop list. Uh, you, pre you press like if, and there will be a number of uh, things that if this happens, if that happens, then, and then there will be a number of things that you can, you can implement what to do when this happens. OK, so that, uh, and this is kind of a must nowadays in, in, in a uh, data recovery hardware imager, because every drive is unique. Every, there is no way of, of, of building an algorithm that will work uh, the most efficient way for all drives. There is a way that there is an algorithm that will work for all drives, right? Like every drive, but, but not efficient enough. So by not efficient, I mean every drive has its own behavior, its own pattern. And when you see that pattern and you have that ability, then you can customize it the way that is, is actually most efficient <clears throat> right, for your drive. Yeah? Why doesn't it just skip over the no data on its own? Yeah, the question, uh, the question was uh, why it doesn't skip over data on its own. Uh, because it's really hard to say <laughs> what uh, uh, it's really hard to define what is it no data, okay? Like uh, like from zeros, for instance, yeah, uh, yeah, it could be yeah, it could be pretty straightforward. But in some cases, I know for sure, for instance, that some drives are wiped with certain pattern, right? When you see that, you can also recognize a certain pattern as no data. So uh, it's it's really the only problem uh, is that there is no straightforward way to define what means. If, if there is data, oh, there's no data, OK? But, uh, but again, with the, with the space bar, it's, it's very, very easy. So for you, if you see, oh, it looks like, like no data, OK? You can press space bar. Or maybe you don't need to, to, to jump, right? Maybe uh, the drive is not in a bad shape, and you just run it, and it will just run till the end of the, end, end of the drive, and then get back, because it's fully automated. So basically, when you run it by default configuration, it will go the first pass keeping all problematic areas, and then it will go second pass digging to those problematic areas sector by sector using different commands. So it's different, so it's, it's doing lots of things automatically uh, to retrieve everything. And when the drive, again, is not in a bad shape, 
uh, you can just you can just leave it as is. You know, you can just run it and just leave it, and it will image the entire drive, and then it will take that image and uh, and run any data recovery software or use. Uh, or use, in fact, uh, our uh, logical recovery software that is called uh, Deep Spa Recovery Environment. Yeah. You, you, you have a question? No? Okay, I'm sorry. No. <clears throat> so, Deep Spa Recovery Environment. So, this is, uh, this is a, um, a Windows based application uh, uh, that is supplied together with DDI. So, it's a free application. Uh, but free in terms of that it's included into the package, right? With DDI, it's not it's not free on its own. So it works only with DDI, either over the network or it can process images acquired by DDI. Okay. So if you have a DDI and you just cr created the entire image, you can take that image and plug it into your Windows machine and run this software. And and uh, and the, the good thing and good functionality of uh, advantage. Uh, put it this way, of DRE uh, compared to any other software uh, recovery uh, tools is that it knows the structure of the map. It can verify integrity of, of files. Okay, That's what I, I, I was talking about. That is quite critical from the business communication to the client perspective. So when you have an image, you plug it in, and based on the, on the map in the, at the bottom, it knows where each file is located. It can verify if, uh, whether each fragment is not affected by any bad sectors, and then it can generate a report or, or uh, save only, only good files. So that's a good thing. And then another thing, it's, it's just a regular data recovery software. It supports uh, uh, pretty much all file systems, uh, HFS, NTFS, EXT, uh, XFAT, FAT, so pretty much everything. Okay, so, and it's included into DDI. Okay, so you don't have to buy anything. <clears throat> and uh, so the only thing that I would really recommend you is really network it on. Because network it on, uh, uh, and I'll show you uh, during the lab session, that you can just run it and see the file tree and only select files and image only those files. That saves a lot of time. And again, when you are saving time, you make the process safer, right? Don't forget this. It's not just about time. It's, it's really also about increasing your chances to actually recover data before a drive dies on you. And, and most drives <laughs> die on you, OK? So <laughs> it's just a matter of time. As soon as you have some kind of degradation, a drive starts kind of you know, any read instability, no, for sure, it will die. Okay, it will die. It just, it's just a matter of you to, to, to do it the right way and to, to get as much as possible prior to this happens. Okay? Especially take it into consideration that some drives may, may drive, uh, may die like forever, like, you know, unrecoverable due to the scratches or any other uh, physical uh, <clears throat> issues. Uh, so it, it looks pretty straightforward like is any debt recovery software. <clears throat> Okay, so very quickly, uh, Deep Spar Disk Imager uh, benefits. Uh, quick and reliable diagnostics on disk level, data level, and some drive level, as I mentioned, for instance, you can identify some mechanical issues, some, uh, some electronics uh, issues. Uh, ready to use from day one using the default configuration. So don't be scared again. As soon as you have it, you can run it with default configuration, push the button, and if you don't know how to do things, let it go, okay? And it will go <coughs> on its own. Uh, speed and stability. It's straightforward, but I am telling you that we have many tools on the market that simply don't work. <laughs> okay, and, and unfortunately, that recovery industry is one of the, uh, from vendor's perspective, that's one of the industry that has no direct, uh, how should I say, diagnostic of the tool, right? Because you take the drive, unstable drive, connect it to some tool, and tools say, OK, no, unfortunately, you know, it's a bad drive. No way to recover it. You know? So, and, and you accept that. So, so basically what I'm saying, there is no way to test whether the tool will work or not. And there is nothing anyone can do. Because again, it's not like, you know, if this is computer, you know what I mean, right? If this is computer, it's supposed to work. You plug in the drive, it's supposed to work, right? And, and that's why it's really easy to test it. But if this is data recovery tool, what it means, like it, it works not. It just, it cannot recover certain drives, right? But the vendor will tell you, well, it works. It just, you know, you're not lucky. 
you're plugging in the wrong drive, you know? <laughs> you should find a better drive. drive. <laughs> yeah, exactly, it's your hard drive, you know? And this is what they're saying. <clears throat> so it's uh, speed and stability, that's why, and don't trust me also, by the way. You know, trust your partners, try, trust your colleagues. Trust someone who you know using some tool, okay? This is what I'm saying, that's the message. <clears throat> So it's interactive, easy to view progress, result on the fly, compare you know, to software recoveries, and, uh, and the peace of mind. If the drive can be accessed with DDI, most likely, pretty much certainly, it has a drive level problem. It needs to be outsourced, okay? So it's that simple. If you cannot recover data with DDI, you have to proceed with the clean room stuff, okay? So, so that's why, this is a tool, it's a perfect match for the IT industry, because I know most of you don't have plans to become a professional data recovery shop, right? But most of you still want to leave, you know, to do in-house as much as possible, right? So to do as many drives as possible without clean room solution, okay? So, and this is really peace, peace of mind. Just, okay, if, if I cannot do that, most likely it's, it's, it's a much more complex case that I, I, you, should, you should outsource, okay? And that's, that's it. <clears throat> and then it's a multi-purpose, so it's just sector by sector imager. Uh, you can use it in UIT work also, right? So if you want just to, just to create a, you know, an image of, of any drive, you can just, yeah, you can just use it as a, as a regular imager. Okay, and it also has a cloning functionality without creating imaging map, and it will image usually with pre pretty much maximum drive speed. Okay, you just plug it in, you, maybe you're just selling computers you need to clone, or for backup purposes, why not, right? For backup purposes, you just want to create the entire image. You, you can use this tool also, just a regular imager. <clears throat> and automation, so much less technician time spent on data recovery much less, because uh, uh, all these tuning up things, this is again, this is to, to increase performance, okay? To make recovery faster, safer, or get more data, but in most of the cases, you just push the button, default configuration, and it, it will do it in multi-pass and retrieve only, you know, good areas first, and then dig in into, into uh, 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 problematic areas. <clears throat> 